this video, we'll test run the motor through Sigma Win Plus version 7. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. Sigma Win Plus version 7 provides two basic types of test run, jog and program jog. The jog function is the most basic test just to see if the motor can run. And program jog acts like a built-in motion controller for very simple positioning. I invite you now to follow along with me and do a test run. You'll need connection to the remote training demo with the remote I.O. interface. And I can turn the servo on. And with the speed at 180, I can jog positive and jog negative. If I disconnect the positive over travel, the letter P flashes on the amplifier. And I can't jog positive anymore. I can still jog negative just not positive. If I connect the positive over travel and disconnect the negative over travel, then I can jog positive again, but no longer jog negative. And you notice there's an N flashing on the display of the amplifier now. Let me ask you a question. Where are the commands coming from that tell the motor to move? Well, it starts with the button on the remote I.O., which through the miracle of the internet communicates to the controller, and the controller tells the servo amplifier to move the servo motor. What if I'd press one of these buttons and the motor didn't spin as expected? Where is the problem? Is it the motor? Is it the amplifier? Is it the controller? Maybe it's the remote I.O. So the point is we need a way to be able to directly test the operation of the motor. This way we can break down the system into smaller components and just test that the motor and amplifier the Sigma 7 servo is working correctly. Let's connect that over travel and turn off the servo and open Sigma Win Plus version 7. Let's open that project file we've been working with called Sigma 7 Training and connect the SGD7S, that's that Z axis. Connect. Now in the menu, under Test Run, we'll choose Jog. A couple of important warnings here. First, that the motor will spin, so be sure it's safe. And second, that the over-travel inputs I was just demonstrating will now be ignored. We'll test that out soon. Click OK and the Jog Operation window appears. Now you'll need to be able to see the demo at the same time, so let's adjust this window. And it's always a good idea to edit this Jog speed to a safe RPM. Let's go to edit and slow it down a little bit, maybe to 30 RPM. Again, this min minus one unit means RPM. Now, servo on. And if you hold down the forward button, you see we're going counterclockwise. Hold down the reverse button and we're going clockwise. This is your basic amplifier level jog to verify operation of the amplifier and motor. The command is coming directly from the amplifier itself to the motor without the controller and without the remote I.O. Now back to this concept of over-travel. Over-travels are inputs to the servo connected to sensors installed at each extreme of the machine's range of motion. During normal operation, if the load were to reach one of those sensors, the circuit is disconnected and that makes the motor stop. The over-travels on this demo are wired to the amplifier and as we saw they can be connected and disconnected through this remote IO interface. With the over travels disconnected like they are now I can try to jog and it still works. Notice that the display doesn't say P or N right now like it did previously. If I close this jog window now the over travels are active again and it's showing both P and N because those are the over-travel inputs that I've disconnected. So that's why during startup, or if a machine is down, jog operation is a great way to test whether or not the motor can run. It's also good to know that if the load is stuck on an over-travel sensor, you can jog the motor to move the load back. Simply put, with jog operation, if the motor can move, it will. Now, the safety circuits and e-stops are not ignored, but since the over-travels are ignored, a little extra caution is required when working near a machine during a jog operation. 
What if the motor won't run even with jog operation? What could be the cause? All alarms do turn off the servo, so one reason could be that the amplifier has an alarm. Let's produce an alarm and see how this works. I know some of you really want to see what happens if you were to set the jog speed to the maximum. So okay, go ahead and try it. Let's put in 10,000 here, the maximum. This isn't generally recommended on a machine, but no harm done here on the demo. All right, so servo on, and then if you rapidly click forward or reverse, eventually you'll get this alarm, A521, which by the way is the auto-tuning alarm caused by the vibration detected when the servo stops and starts. So obviously you see here that you can't jog anymore and you can't even uh, turn the servo back on. And if you do, it tells you that the function can't be executed because an alarm has occurred is one of those options. The other causes listed here are also good checkpoints. Maybe is the controller already turning on the servo? That would stop your jog operation. Or maybe the main power is not connected. And what about the safety input, which is also called the hardwire base block? Yet another possibility is that the motor power cable itself isn't even connected to the amplifier or maybe not to the motor. Or it could be that the power and encoder cables have been mixed up between different amplifiers that are installed on the same panel. In short, if the motor won't jog and there are no alarms, then one of these two components is either not correctly installed or has possibly failed. Let's clear this alarm and I'll do that with the remote I.O. Alarm reset. You may be wondering why such a high speed didn't produce the alarm AD00 for excessive position error like we observed in a previous video. The difference is behind the scenes related to the control method. Jog commands a speed to the amplifier speed loop, whereas the controller commands a position to the position loop. While jog operation is active, there is no position error, and that's why alarm AD00 is not generated. Back now to jog operation. When we set the jog speed to 10,000 and ran it, did it really go that fast? What could you do to find out? Well, what I would do is from the main menu, open up the monitor, and let's look at this motor rotating speed. Now while we run, let's wait for that to update. It does take some time to update. And the monitor shows the speed is 6,000 RPM, not the 10,000 RPM. And that's because 6,000 is the maximum published speed for this motor. Okay, we can close jog and we can close the monitor. Now let's use program jog to move the motor a specific distance. We can open the z-axis menu and go to program jog operation. The warnings basically state that the motor is going to move and when you're done, it's not going to be where it is now. It's also saying that the move profile and the indicators of the move progress may not be exact. Let's click OK. And this is the main window for program jog, where you set the distance and the speed, the XL decel, the time between moves and the number of moves, as well as some repeat options down here. Let's set this program jog up for 10 rotations at the rated speed of 3000 RPMs. Now the units listed for distance are not in revolutions or rotations, they're given as reference units. With the MPIEC controller, the reference unit is always one encoder pulse. So the question is, how many encoder pulses in 10 rotations? If only we had this product information handy. And we do. Let's close program jug. And if you remember, there's a product monitor. Under the menu, go to read product information. This product information shows that the encoder resolution is 16,777,216 pulses per revolution. So if we add a zero to this number, we will have 10 rotations. Back to program jog. Put in 16777216 and a zero, that's 10 rotations. We said 3000 RPM. 
The Excel decel time could be 35 milliseconds with 1000 milliseconds between move repeats. At any time you can hit the apply button to see what the move looks like. Next, let's enter 3 for the number of moves and hit apply so we can see what effect the operation pattern has on this. If we change the pattern to 1 and apply, now instead of 3 forward moves, it's 3 reverse moves to negative speed. Option 2 does 3 forward followed by 3 reverse. Option 3 just does the reverse moves first followed by forward. Option 4, forward and reverse, 3 total cycles because we have the 3. And number 5, looks like we go reverse first oscillating back and forth 3 total cycles. And these are the options that you have for the program jock move. Let's go back to operation pattern 0 and 0 number of moves as you see here says infinite actually. Hit apply, changes to yellow and that means it will just repeat this forward move until we cancel it. Okay, let's run program jog. Set up my windows here and we'll hit run, servo on, and I have an error. It says maybe the servo is already on or an alarm has occurred. It's the same errors that we see in the regular jog. Over traveled, however, is a new one to this list and it looks like that's what I have, the P and N indicators. So a very important distinction, program jog does not override the over travels and we'll need to connect those in order to run program jog. Let's try that again. Program jog. Notice this profile is retained because all these are parameters stored in the servo. Once again, we'll do run servo on and execute. Yes. It moved a little, but now we have the error again. And this time we have that familiar AD00 again. Let's set that parameter PN520 that controls this alarm level. Let's set that once and for all. Looks like the parameters are not available because I have the product information open. Let's close that and try again. Edit parameters. PN5XX. Let's add a couple zeros again to this. Hit enter. Write the edited parameters. We still have the alarm though. I think I'll clear it through the remote I.O. Alarm reset. And that one more time, let's do the program jog operation. Okay. And run this move. Servo on. Execute. Is it safe? Yes, it is. And there we have the motor speeding along. Since we did get the position error alarm, I think you'll agree that the program jog operates just like a controller, sending position commands to the position loop of the amplifier, just like the controller does. The main difference is that the controller does this over Mechatrolink 3, whereas program jog sends this position command internally. Program jog can be quite useful for setting up a quick move to test the motor and the connected mechanism. It's also great when you need to run a test move, but you don't have access to the controller or an HMI panel like we have here. We use this program jog all the time for tuning. If you tune the servo performance based on a program jog test move, you can expect very similar performance when the motion controller commands a similar move. Let's finish up program jog now by clicking cancel and the warning that the motor has probably drifted we'll click OK. You can always come back and change this profile by using this button running condition resetting and change these parameters if you want to alter your move. Let's close program jog. Now we made some parameter changes so let's save those. 
go to save to project and complete that by clicking save at the project level and finally if you try to use the controller after either jog or program jog you may lose communication between the controller and the amplifier or you may get that alarm a 0 b 0 either way when you're done with these functions you're going to need to reboot the whole system and luckily through the remote IO interface we have a button for that okay the reboot is complete and I'm able to operate the machine again here let's test that out yes if this was a real machine you would definitely want to verify the machine position before you went it back into production mode our test moves are complete and we're up and running again thank you for watching this video for more information on Sigma 7 please go to yaskawa.com products Sigma 7 servo products